Welcome to Cases of Mistaken Identity. These tutorials are based on real questions asked by my medical and dental students over the years. This is Case 2, Cartilage, and I'm Dr. Katherine Moore, the Histology Wizard. Now my students sometimes struggle with distinguishing among the different types of cartilage. Remember that there are three types, elastic, hyaline, and fibrocartilage. Let's investigate. Remember that these cartilage subtypes are located in different places in the body. Hyaline cartilage is found in the articular surfaces of movable joints, the walls of large respiratory passages such as the nose, larynx, trachea, and bronchi, the ventral ends of the ribs, and the epiphyseal plates of the long bones. It also forms the temporary skeleton during development. Elastic cartilage is found in the auricle of the ear, as shown here, the walls of the external auditory canals, the auditory or eustachian tube, the epiglottis, and some laryngeal cartilages. Fibrocartilage is located in the intravertebral discs, the pubic symphysis, and attachments of certain ligaments. In practice, what this means is that there will be other clues besides morphology to help you recognize which type of cartilage you're looking at. For now, let's compare the characteristics of each type, and we'll start with hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most common and probably the most recognizable cartilage subtype. So first, you want to identify this tissue by the presence of chondrocytes. And I sometimes think of this as looking at those craft googly eyes. In hyaline cartilage, these chondrocytes are found in groups of three to seven cells that are called isogenous groups or aggregates. And these are relatively spaced out. And this cartilage has the highest numbers of cells per group. Overall, hyaline cartilage contains very few fibers, and it looks pretty homogenous. It has a glassy or glossy, almost transparent appearance due to the large amount of water it contains. Its high amount of matrix makes it very basophilic, such that hyaline cartilage usually has a pale to dark purple color, and that color gets darker towards the center. Elastic cartilage also contains chondrocytes and matrix, but can be differentiated from hyaline in several different ways. First, it has more cells than matrix. In fact, it has the highest number of chondrocytes of the three types. And while it does have isogenous groups, there are fewer cells per group than in hyaline cartilage. The color, as shown here, even in an H&E stain is darker and almost duller than hyaline but the most distinguishing feature is the presence of elastic fibers, which you can really see here in this section stained with Verhoff stain, which colors those fibers black. Those fibers will also look like thin, kind of shiny threads that you can see even in an H&E stain section. Now remember, type two cartilage fibers are too small to be seen in a light microscope. So if you see these thin-like fibers, it's going to be elastic cartilage. And it's these high numbers of elastic fibers that make elastic cartilage the most flexible. So take a hold of your ear and twist it back and forth to see just how flexible elastic cartilage is. Now finally we come to fibrocartilage. You can almost think of this tissue as a mix of cartilage and dense irregular connective tissue, since it contains not only type two collagen, but abundant amounts of type one collagen, which form large visible fibers throughout the tissue which gives this tissue great tensile strength and resistance to pressure. And so that's why you find it in areas of the body that are subject to pulling pressures, such as the pubic symphysis and the menisci. Now, if we compare fiber cartilage to the other two types, it has more fibers than cells, and those cells tend to sit in individual lacunae, and they produce much less matrix. So what this means is that the tissue is gonna be much more eosinophilic or acidophilic than elastic or hyaline cartilage. So if you see chondrocytes, but the tissue looks pink and fibrous, you know it must be fibrocartilage. Now be sure to look for those chondrocytes. If you see them, you'll know that you're looking at fibrocartilage and not dense irregular connective tissue. And finally, the lack of a perichondrium, that outer dense layer of connective tissue that's essential for cartilage growth, identifies this tissue as fibrocartilage. Let's briefly review the three types. 
All three cartilage types contain type 2 collagen and are avascular, but only fibrocartilage contains type 1 collagen, which you'll see as those pinkish red fibers. Elastic cartilage has more cells, less matrix, and those thinner elastic fibers. And hyaline cartilage has large isogenous groups, few fibers, and a rich, shiny appearance. I hope these tips will help you solve this case of mistaken identity. Thanks for stopping by.